When I was 24, I had the world at my feet. I was an upcoming theatre performer. Life was sweet. My biggest dream was to make it big on Broadway. But all that changed when I went to the gym one day. So I was in the middle of a pump class, in the middle of a really busy Sydney gym, when the biggest explosion went off in the back of my head. I sat up immediately because I thought that my eye had fallen out, but it hadn't. What had happened was a massive bleed into the lining of my brain, straight into my brainstem. Suddenly, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't speak, couldn't stand, and eventually stay conscious. The thought that at 24, I was having a major stroke never even entered my head, but a lot of blood did. When I came to in the ICU over a month later, I emerged and felt completely alien and just separate from my body. My head absolutely killed and I had no hair. There's a tube jammed up my nose, piece of gauze slapped across my eye. And when I tried to speak, nothing came out because the stroke had paralyzed my vocal cord. So essentially, I was this professional singer, actor, dancer, and now I couldn't walk, talk, or swallow. I had no idea who I was anymore. The curtain had come down. Rehab was a long and lonely road. I lost my identity, my agency, and all my confidence with intimacy, and eventually I found myself single. But over time, and with a lot of help from a therapist, I decided that I wanted to meet someone. But how? Let's be real. Dating sucks for everyone, but trying to win over a potential lover by dazzling them with your permanent double vision and vertigo sucks even harder. I mean, I want to feel desirable, not disabled. So my plan is to keep all my dysfunctions to myself. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, it was time for my first date. So I arrive at the cafe early to practice my cool, calm and capable persona and suddenly I see the guy. Instantly I assume that he's completely out of my league so it's time to Give him the old razzle dazzle. Hi. During our conversation, I noticed that he's like very intensely holding my gaze, which is very typical of the gaze, but I'm concerned that my eyes are crossed and that he can see my dysfunction. Because although you see this, I see this. On top of everything, I just want to keep up my uncool, calm and capable persona and so I don't disclose anything. I just tell him that I was an aspiring musical theatre performer and now I'm an aspiring filmmaker, surgically removing any mention of my catastrophic stroke and residual dysfunction from my story. Eventually he asks, so what are you doing for the rest of the day? My only plans are swallowing practice, and so I'm like, without even thinking, oh, um, I just scratched the day in case we hit it off. Suddenly he's like, oh, do you want to walk back to my place? And I'm like, sounds ace. Now I have to walk four kilometers when the most that I've walked since rehab without stopping is 40 meters. My vertigo is in full flight and so I have to stop every 100 meters to steady myself with my finger pretending to window browse. I'm also wearing shoes bought deliberately one size too small to help me balance but now my feet are blistering and I feel like I'm in an episode of Survivor. After my four kilometre frolicking facade, we finally arrive back at his place. My throat is now pulled with saliva and my feet are covered in blisters. So I ask for a drink and to take off my shoes. 
Suddenly his eyes light up, he hands me a glass of wine and looks towards the lounge. I'm getting all the signals and I am completely freaking out. I mean, I have got half a numb face, a clicky jaw. I don't even know if I can kiss anymore. Fortunately though, he sees my freeze and simply says, hey, do you wanna like maybe watch a movie? You pick. Awkwardly, I can't even see what I'm meant to be reading. The covers are just like doubled and blurry, so I just picked the most colorful one, which turns out to be a homoerotic reading of Othello. He's like, hello, and I'm like, oh, hell no. So I can't even see what's happening on the TV to follow the film. Everything is just so blurry and doubled, so I have to inconspicuously spy on his motions for my cue of when to laugh. <laughs> A whole nother movie later, 11 hours after this dating dilemma began, I'm still completely exhausted and completely frozen. I haven't even touched a drop of my drink because I'm still concerned about how I'll go managing my walk home in the dark. He finally figures that nothing's gonna happen and he decides to call it a night. He gives me a wholesome hug and off I go, completely exhausted, but completely exhilarated that I have finally conquered my first date since rehab. Over the next few days, I'm like a giddy teenager waiting for him to call, planning what our next meetup's gonna be like. Maybe it would be different if we do it on my terms, on my turf. Maybe I'll even disclose a bit more about what life's like for me. But when eventually he does reach out, he lets me know really gently that we're at different places and we want different things. And the truth is, he was right. But I was absolutely devastated. So since the date, I've wondered, I've let it mull around in my head a lot. What if things have been different? What if I'd just been a bit more honest? You know, I, I don't know. I just wonder what would have happened if I just pressed pause on our dishonest date, taken a deep breath and looked him straight in the eye, double vision and all, and simply chose to disclose. <laughs> 